Hello and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. This week, uh, we're, we're uh, proving the Euler characteristic of, of uh, planar and connected graphs is equal to 2. Uh, you probably are familiar with the Euler characteristic when talking about polyhedra, and so that's what we're kind of going to base our proof on today. So the Euler characteristic, of course, is the vertices minus the edges plus the faces of a graph or polyhedra, if you're, um, if you're familiar with that. But the way we get from polyhedra to uh, planar and connected graphs is if you imagine a cube or any polyhedra wrapped around a sphere. Uh, so if you have a cube inside of a sphere and you have a light inside at the center, uh, projecting that out onto the sphere will give you kind of this curvy cube. And then if you imagine puncturing the sphere at the top and unwrapping the sphere, uh, we'll get a planar graph because uh, the plane maps uh, on a one-to-one -one correspondence, meaning every point on the plane is mapped to a point on the graph and vice versa. So. Um, I guess you have something to visualize. I'm just going to draw a, uh, that stereographic projection of a cube onto a plane. So here is our flattened out cube. Um, one thing to note is that there's a face here, 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 and here. Uh, there's also a face that uh, we kind of stretched out to infinity as we, uh, as we unfolded it. So we're just going to think of a face being outside the perimeter there. Uh, so you can add up the vertices, subtract the edges, and add up the faces. Uh, and indeed, the uh, Euler characteristic, or uh, I think this is chi of, of this graph, is going to be equal to 2. So. We're going to get into proving the, that the Euler characteristic of chi of any planar and connected graph is equal to 2. Uh, but first, we need some basic kind of underlying notions. Uh -huh. So other than connectedness and planar and uh, planar graph properties, which m means that a connected graph means there are no kind of vertices uh, or sets of vertices connected by edges that are. So if you think of roads connecting vertices, that you can you can get to every vertice basically, and uh, planar graphs can be drawn on a plane without overlapping uh, without overlapping edges. So, um, and one thing if you're not familiar with graph theory is the location of the vertices don't really matter uh, and the length of the edges don't matter. Uh, all that matters is like continuous transformations of the graph. So if you can continually transform uh, overlapping edges to make them not overlapping, then uh, your graph is still planar. Uh, and we're also going to be talking about spanning trees and dual graphs. Uh, spanning tree is any, uh, any subgraph of a graph G, so G sub T, such that every vertice is connected with a minimal number of edges. Um, spanning trees are connected, and they do not have any loops, because uh, if you if you use a loop, you have uh, kind of a superfluous edge there that you don't need to connect all of the, all of the uh, vertices. And a dual graph is a uh, is a graph constructed from an, from the graph G, so G star, where you add a ver uh, vertex at the center of each face and have edges in this dual graph which connect the um, which connect the vertices through um, edges that connect the faces. So 
I'm going to draw the dual graph so you can uh, dual graph of this cube so you can imagine it better. So this is our uh, dual graph of just our, our cube or whatever. And um, so we're just going to move on to trying to extract information about the number of vertices and number of faces. And uh, you notice that the uh, faces of any dual graph of G, or the vertices rather are of any dual graph of G, are going to be equal to the faces of G. Um, so we're, we're going to end up kind of substituting in uh, and getting just one, uh, one set of points. So that's going to be edges in the end. So we're just going to be looking at the edges of, of any graph, of a planar connected graph. Um, so we're going to look at properties of spanning trees. And in any spanning tree, since it's connected and there are no loops, Um, the uh, vertices of your spanning tree are going to be equal to the edges of your spanning tree plus one. So the number of vertices are going to be one more than the number of edges. Um, this is clear to see if I just draw a graph with even just two vertices, um, we have uh, one, one edge. And, and you can also have like you could have multiple edges connecting the two vertices, but since the spanning tree has the minimal number of edges, we just have one. And of course, there's no loop. If I were to add three, you can see that if there were a loop, it would be a superfluous edge. Uh, so um, we know that the this. Uh, the vertices of our graph are going to be equal to the vertices of our um, spanning tree since the spanning tree is a subgraph of G. And we're also going to be looking at another construction, which is which is G minus T star. So um, this is a bit harder to wrap your head around uh, intuitively. But it is indeed a spanning tree of uh, G star because it, uh, since T is connected, G minus T star is going to have no loops. And since uh, T has no loops, G minus T star is going to be connected. Um, the way to think of that is, um, I'll, I'll actually go back to this example so you could kind of have a concrete example to think about. So here I have the spanning tree of our, of our cube graph, and I have uh, the complement of the spanning tree. And notice that in this particular case, uh, G minus T star is connected and has no loops, making it a spanning tree of G star. And that's important to notice um, because we're kind of looking at the complement's dual graph for a spanning tree. So um, take some time to think about that. And, and, but for now, we just need to know that it is indeed a, going to be a spanning tree in the general case, meaning that the vertices of G minus T star, uh, meaning that the vertices of G minus T star are going to be equal to the edges of that graph plus one. So. We also know that the vertices of G minus T star are going to be the for equal to the vertices of G minus of G star, since this is indeed a construction of a subgraph of V sub G. 
uh, phi sub g of, sorry, it's a subgraph of g star. And that is equal to the faces of g. So now we have all of the components we need to boil down this Euler characteristic. So um, what we have now is, is um, this is equal to the vertices, this is the same edges, and this is equal to the faces. Um, the number of, of whatever I just said. So we're just looking at like uh, quantities here. And um, one thing to note uh, in a general case is that the edges of your graph are going to be equal to the edges of your uh, spanning tree plus the edges of g minus t star. So um, because any edge that is left out of the spanning tree is going to be connected in g minus t star um, because you're going to be constructing new edges through the uh, neglected edges in, e in, e uh, in your spanning tree because uh, we're looking at the dual graph of the complement of your spanning tree. So that means that um, those, those three are all going to cancel out. They're going to be equal to each other. And we're just going to be left with two. And so that's the proof that the Euler characteristic of any planar connected graph is equal to two. Thank you for watching. Uh, uh, this is a proof about graph theory. I hope you learned something from it and maybe you are inspired to learn more about graph theory. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out the playlist of our problems of the week, or visit our website with a bunch of math resources um, and with these links to my side. And of course, if you're on mobile, you can find the links to those in a card up in the corner. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day.